Well, here we are again at Bellex, and we're going to talk about what's going on in the exhibition. I've been around and had a look, so let's hope that I found some interesting things for you. Well, of course, the British manufacturers are here. They design super, they've developed for the customer, and of course, they've used the latest technology. Uh, cookers in particular, and indeed all our, all our appliances, are very energy efficient. And of course, virtually every cooker you will see will have a dual circuit boiling ring, a dual circuit grill, and of course, the famous fan ovens. They also uh, su uh, perform superbly, and of course, they do cook like the British want them to cook. And of course, if they cook the British way, they'll cook anything. All our appliances are BIAB approved or going through for BIAB approval. And for those of you that perhaps don't know, BEAB stands for British Electrotechnical Approvals Board. Oh, I got that out, so I'll stick to BIAB in future. Also, I hear the British are getting abroad, and I thought you'd be interested. Uh, you know Creda, who pioneered the slimline heater? Well, evidently, they tell me that they're now selling in Russia, Spain, USA, and even Japan. And the Japanese are going bananas, perhaps that's the wrong word, for storage heaters. And they've recently been awarded the Good Design Award in Japan, and I believe it's a very prestigious award. Well, I usually have a theme, don't I, for you? And somebody did say to me, to, uh, well, let's have a day in the life of. Well, those of you sitting out there, particularly the women, will know the day in the life of doesn't exist because we really don't stay at home very often. And so consequently, I decided that I'd have a, my day in the life of. Well, let's start with the morning. It will be, usually, juice, coffee, and toast. I tumble dry my clothes that I put in my washing machine overnight, have a quick shower, and then I'm ready for the day. Of course, as you would expect, I have storage heaters, and so therefore everything is on the less than half price electricity economy seven. Well, having led myself into it, let's talk about some appliances for the morning. First of all, kettles. And I always seem to give you figures to start off with, and I'm not going to change things now. So, kettles. 1977, 72% of homes had electric kettles. And in 1987, 87% had electric kettles. 9% were jug ones. And it does seem, of course, that the customer loved the jug, jug kettles. Uh, they're also, of course, very energy efficient. The cordless type is coming in now, and a lot of people have said to me, well, cordless, what does it, where's the cord, where's the cord? So, for those of you that might be worried, uh, usually you have a base like this, the flexible is here, you plug into your socket outlet, and then your kettle just connects onto the top. Of course, with jug kettle, you can have various plastics and various colours, a small amount of liquid, or water rather, so that one can be really energy efficient and just have a cup of hot water for a, a, a cup of coffee, if you so desire, or tea. This is a Hayden, uh, but there are a lot of manufacturers here, and I've got a list for you, so if you want to look out for kettles, Hayden, Swan, Morphe Richards, Russell Hobbs, and Breville. Moving now on to toasters, Again, some figures for you. 1977, 30% of homes had a, an electric toaster. 1987, 42%. So there's a way to go. And it's a pity more people don't have them because, of course, it's so much more energy efficient using a toaster rather than a grill, which you have to heat up. And, of course, with today's toasters, they're so much nicer. This particular one is an Electra, and you'll see it on the Electricity Council stand, um, and includes some of the features that many of the uh, toasters that you will see around have. Uh, thick and thin bread. This one's rather special because you can actually toast those buns that we're all going to have at Easter and put on weight with. And also, the outside is plastics rather than metal, so it's a cool toaster. Many of them are electronic control, so the browning down to a fine degree. Who's got them? Well, here we go again. Morphe Richards, Russell Hobbs, and Swan. So there are other, three other stands to look at. And incidentally, Swan tell me that they've made a, p a positive decision to put a lot of money into manufacturing in this country. So they're uh, going to try and manufacture everything they can in their factory over here. So that's good news. Now to showers. In 1977, I sound like a record, 1% of homes had one. Uh, by 1987, 14%. And in case you're interested, you can stand under a shower for four minutes enjoying yourself, 
for only half a unit of electricity. And in cash, that's 3p. Uh, for those of you that want to wallow in a bath, uh, a bath, 10, 16 gallons, depends how greedy you are with your water or how heavy you are, perhaps, and the price is 9 to 17p. There's a wide choice of uh, showers on show, and they're usually 7 or 8 kilowatt. Those that are 8 kilowatt, you get rather more water coming through, and of course you get a slightly more luxurious shower. So if you're thinking about a shower for yourselves, you might like to look at those. Um, lots of features, of course, but I've just selected two. Aquatron, they have, believe it or not, a skin toning device. And I'm told, I haven't tried it yet, but it automatically changes the water temperature as you're showering. So you, the change of temperatures, uh, temperature <laughs> tones the skin. Triton have a flush fitting one, and it's push button control, and I am also told that the local authorities are installing it for their disabled tenants. If you're interested in other showers, Myra, Heat Ray, Russell Hobbs, and IMI Santon. So there we go. Dryers, well, I said I do my drying in the morning. Absolutely so. More figures for you. 1977, 21% of homes had a dryer, a spin dryer. A tumble dryer, 9%, quite low. 1987, 15% had a spin dryer and 31% a tumble dryer. But don't forget, we've got the washer-dryers now being sold, and so that gives us another 7%, which means that in 1987, 38% of homes had a tumble-dryer, which is really quite interesting. Spin-dryers have dropped, but in fact, tumble-dryers have come up, and I wonder if we can contribute it to the lovely summers we have. With tumble dryers, of course, you can stack them. Again, you all know this, and you can have them side by side. Uh, I've got here a service tumble dryer, and it's electronic, it's very smart, it's got all the facilities that you'd like, the sensor-controlled dryers and other features that you will see around on the stand. Uh, I was rather interested interested with the baby dryers. There's lots of baby dryers around. And uh, they are Hotpoint, Creda, Electrolux, Crossley. Uh, Hoover have got their range here and also Ariston. And of course, you can see the service electronic on the service stand. Now, according to my next card, daytime, not much done. Would you believe it? Uh, in fact, I'm in my office, and I wouldn't say I'm not doing much. But if I am home, I might have a quick whiz round with my vacuum cleaner. So very cleverly, you see, I've put this in. So let's talk about vacuum cleaners. There's, again, many manufacturers here, but let's have some figures first of all. 1977, 90% of homes had a vacuum cleaner. 1987, 96% percent of homes had a vacuum cleaner. So there's a small percentage out there on their hands and needs with a dustpan and brush. There is, of course, one to suit everyone, from handheld to the full size. And this particular one is the, Her the Hoover Turbo Master. And it's rather smart because it's an upright cleaner, of course. But the tools are at the back, so you don't have to lug them round. Uh, those of you that do the vacuuming with tools know they have to. Uh, we've also got the, the extension hose here, and uh, the extension tube, rather, and the extension hose there. So they're all neatly packed away, so you can go buzzing around the house quite happily. Uh, it has got other features. We've got on this uh, the tools, of course, I've mentioned. There's a carpet selector, so you can go from carpet to floor quite happily. But the most exciting thing, I suppose, is the electronic control, which means that the customer can actually change the motor speed and then also change the power. And you can see this as a digital read-off at the front of this, and so they'll know exactly what they've got. So that's the Hoover Turbo Master. Quite easy to move around, and of course a nice big size, so you can get, cover a good surface area without problems. Uh, Electrolux, they've got theirs here, the latest electronic, which has a flex rewind and air freshener, so everything can smell sweet again. Vax, multi-purpose wet and dry cleaner, but this one also does upholstery, which I think is quite useful. And also they've got a handheld rechargeable uh, vacuum cleaner. Also, I happen to have a look around and find this. And this is not a gun, no, it's not, of course, it's a handheld vacuum cleaner. It's not rechargeable, it goes into the supply, but it comes in here and it's collected here. This is made by Goblin, and they do have tools to go on the front. It's nice and light, so some that perhaps can't lift, might find that very useful. 
Well, having talked about vacuum cleaners, I'm going now to the evening, which is really when I start to move, because I take full advantage, naturally, of my refrigerator, freezer, microwave cooker, and cooker, and my husband, if he's around. No, <laughs> I'm glad you're with me. I can't see you, see, that's the trouble. Here we are. This is the uh, LEC fridge freezer, and I'm going to talk to you now about refrigeration, if I may. Some figures again. 1977, freezers 20%, fridge freezers 10%, quite low. Refrigerators 75%. And having done a little bit of mathematics with my fingers, fridge, uh, fridge freezers and freezers together means that in 1977, 30% of homes had a freezer in one form of the other, or the other. If I change it to fridge freezers and refrigerators, 85% of homes had a fridge. If we move on to 1987, freezers had gone to 38%, so they'd gone up quite a lot, as you'd expect. Fridge freezers from 10% had gone up to 42%, and refrigerators to 58%. So here they'd gone down, but of course the fridge freezers had gone up. And again, with my clever fingers and calculations, it does mean it was by 1987, 80% of homes had a freeze and 100% a refrigerator. Now, freezers, I'm sure all aware, are very useful where somebody that's older that get out to the shops very often, or perhaps a yuppie that goes in their Porsche and goes every day. Um, this, for, of course, for all sorts of purposes. And as the figures have indicated, there's been a tremendous upsurge of fridge freezers. Lek I'm showing here, it's rather splendid, and we have the freezer at the bottom and the refrigerator at the top. And nowadays, you get this first. So if you have a look on there, and you'll see that uh, in the reverse position. So people can get what they want with no troubles at all. Also uh, displaying their models, Arison, they've got quite an interesting refrigeration unit, I call it, because it's four zones, four zones, I'll tease in. Uh, there's a frost-free, oh, wonderful word, frost-free freezer section, there's a refrigerator section, there's a naught degree C section for meat and poultry, and then there's a, a larder refrigerator area. So you might like to look at the Ariston for zone plants. Electrolux have got a baby refrigerator, so if you're into babies, as I seem to be today, uh, do have a look on their stand. And Hotpoint, of course, have their full range and include various features, including an anti drip, oh, the words I keep finding, anti drip drinks chiller dispenser and also a tilting wine shell or tilting wine shelves seems better for me and decor frame of course most of our manufacturers do have decor panels or frames for their appliances nowadays well let's move now over to the cookers and just that over 50% of homes have I'm pleased to say an electric cooker good for them and you know the British actually are very much to the fore. People go on about these people abroad, and they're not as good as us. We know that because British cookers, certainly in recent years, are far stylish. The design's good, and of course they use high technology. Now, to prove my point, uh, just to remind, it was Belling who introduced the first domestic fan oven to Europe. Whatever they say, it was Belling who introduced slip-in cooker. It was Tricity who introduced uh, the halogen hob, which I'll be talking about in a moment, cooking by light. And it was Hotpoint who came in with the quick star system, uh, again, the first in Europe. And Hotpoint have the quick star system on their stand, so if you want to talk about it, I did last year, but if you want to talk about it again, you can see them today. Creda are actually now spearheading Brit cookers into other markets, into Europe and the USA, and they actually in America operate out of Chicago. And of course, they're very good people because only last month they were exhibited in Dallas. No. Well, now, last year I did show the prototype of the Belling Twin Oven, and if you remember, there was an embargo on it. You saw it, but you couldn't talk about it until September. Well, it's fully fledged now, but you've never seen any cooking it. And so Belling kindly agreed that Elaine uh, would do some cooking because you know I will work. I only my mouth goes, but my hands don't. And so um, Elaine's been very busy with the food. The two full-size fountains. So we've done, Elling have done away with that tiny oven and a big oven, and this is what the public seem to like. Now I'll ask Belling, um, sorry, Elaine, if she'd be good enough to come on. Uh, but down here, you can see we've got a lovely rib of beef with vegetables, and up here, cooking pastes for tea. It smells good too, and it's all real. I'm afraid you can't have it afterwards because we promised it to the crew behind the scenes. So if we ask Elaine to take that up, to drop doors, normally you wouldn't be working like this. I'll just help Elaine. 
They look splendid, lovely brown crispy potatoes and parsnips, and a lovely rib of beef, which you can't afford. And go with the old British beef, we've got a, a British bread and butter pudding. Now, the recipes will in your press pack from Ling, so if you thought you might like to use them, they'll be there. Thank you. That's the next, that's the bread and butter food coming out. I always feel with these gloves, you're like a space person. Well done. Oh, that looks good, too. We are feeding you, actually. Don't worry. We won't ask you to join the crew with it. And then at the top, we've got sausage rolls, and then uh, also cream horns, and an apricot lattice pie. So you'll be able to see those in a moment when it, uh, Elaine has put them out. But you will notice that Elaine brought something else in with her. And in a moment, I'll show you the hostess idea. Because, of course, it's silly to have two ovens that you can't put to full use. So, OK, if you're not using both ovens at the same time, which you may not wish to, perhaps during the week you'll be using the top, then you can also have, and it's supplied with the cooker, I call it a heated trolley service, but you've got three Pyrex dishes in which you can put food keep the food hot and then serve it later on. And if I lift that up, hopefully we'll be able to see... Oh, no, it's here. I'm sorry. We've changed our position. This morning we were going to put it in there. We've put it on the top here. So three dishes with lids, which we've taken off, and this actually could be a complete meal. Soup, chicken casserole and rice pudding. And that just slides into the bottom unit or the top, if you wish, and there you are. You've got a heated trolley without taking extra space in the kitchen. Well, what else is new? Look out for cookers on the Electrolux stand. They've gone in for cookers. Small cookers on the Valor and Tricity stand and the babies, Baby Belling, so famous, and Baby Berry. So both Belling and Berry are showing the tiny ones. I've talked about cookers generally, and of course the beauty of electric cookers, as you know, and you've heard me say it before, they can go in anywhere. They can be fitted underneath, on the top, wherever you wish, even in the ladies' chamber. But also we give the same choice with boiling rings because we like to give a choice and of course it's so versatile. So the customer can get discs, radiant plates, ceramic, quick start or indeed halogen. And because I like playing with halogen and I haven't got one at home, I've got one here. And just to remind you what it looks like. This is the halogen cooking by light four tungsten halogen lamps which you can see quite clearly here. And as I turn it down, so, of course, I can see where I'm going right down to the lowest simmer. And I do believe that this is the best simmer you could ever get with any fuel because it's very, very fine. And just bring it back up again so you can enjoy the pleasure of it. But what's the other benefits? Well, of course, you can see it when it's on, regardless of which control you're on, but it's very controllable. And that is, of course, a tremendous bonus for some people who do like to see something. And so there we are. That's the Tricity halogen hob, and you'll see that on the Tricity stand. Grills? Well, I haven't got anything up here to show you on grills, but as you're well aware, electric grills are enormous, because our manufacturers are aware that most people nowadays grill, healthy eating, and usually you don't have just one tomato, you have a complete mixed grill. And so the grills will take everything you want to put on it, including big soles, if you can afford them. Not shoe soles, of course, fish soles. Uh, now, they are, of course, superb, but if you are just cooking for yourself and you've got a piece of steak or a piece of fish, or indeed one sausage, a grill that size costs a fortune, doesn't it, when you compare the amount of food you're cooking. Thus, all the grills are dual circuit, and so should anybody want to cook small quantities of food, then, of course, they can have the half grill. Uh, grills by themselves are difficult to come by, and I know from our customers they do sometimes ask for a separate grill. Well, Valor are here today, and for those of you that are looking uh, to write about a separate grill, have a look on the Valor stand and open a couple of their drawers, because you will find a grill in a drawer, which is quite interesting, and it's called the Grill Away. Microwave. W would you expect me to stand here and not talk about microwave? Some more figures for you. 1977, 1% 1 of homes had a microwave cooker. 1987, 28%, so it's really going. Uh, they're obviously loved and cherished, I'm sure. 39 manufacturers are now making microwave cookers, and 239 models are available. Of that, 24 are combination. Well, who's got them here? Belling, Creeder, Electrolux, Swan, Tricity, 
um, and also Russell Hobbs are introducing a small one, 530 watts, and it's designed to go with their reflection range of small appliances. Now I'm wandering over here because you can't see it very clearly, but I'll just lift it for a moment, excuse me. This, I've got it the wrong way up, is a building in kit, shall we say, for the wall. All the manufacturers do do building in kit, kits, not kits, kits, for their microwave cookers, but it should there not be, this not be possible for someone, then Hayden are doing a wall bracket. This is a large one, they do a smaller one, so that the public can hang it on the wall and no problem at all, and it's very sturdy. Now, the cookers I've been talking about have been table-top cookers, and you might say that this is a table-top cooker. Well, of course, it's not. It's the Creda combination, which is a full-size cooker, or oven, and normally it would have, of course, the cabinet on top. But our stand designers decided that it looked prettier like this, so that's why we haven't got the cabinet on top. But as, as I say, it's a full-size oven. So what can we do with it? Well, of course, it's a fan oven. Of course, it can be used as a microwave cooker, or indeed, it can be used, the two together, as a combination. And again, you've seen some cooking from this, but we thought we'd just illustrate today the size of... Oops, Daisy, can't open it. Oh, my strength's gone. I think they've locked it on me. Just a moment. Door open. There we are. That's a safety device, isn't it, for young children? Um, there we are. It's now open, and as you can see, a 24-pound turkey. By using combination, that took two hours, 48 minutes to cook. And I promise you, it's been that one done this morning, and this one's just being finished off. If we cooked it in the conventional oven, it would have taken, and I'm not going to ask you to work it out, six hours, 15 minutes. So they would have been up very early this morning. Of course, it also has a grill in the top of the oven, so it is complete and can be used either as a, an eye-level appliance like this or be fitted under the tabletop. So it can be virtually fit anywhere. Well, let's move now on to dishwashers. Um, well, I think I will say later, yes, we'll go on to dishwashers. Here we are, the hot point. Again, some figures for you. In 1977, 2% of homes had dishwasher. 1987, 9%. So every year, people are finding the benefits. Uh, last year, I showed you the service secret dishwasher. You may remember it was a secret because it's hidden behind a kitchen cupboard. Uh, I'm pleased to say it is, it, it is here on the service stand. So should you not have seen it, well, then have a look there. Open a few cabinets and you'll find it. Many builders are leaving space for dishwashers. Uh, this is builders of new homes. So it's quite interesting because they know the market well and they realise that this is what their new or their new purchase are looking for. And some of them actually supply a dishwasher with their new home. Uh, who else is exhibiting? Well, we've got Electrolux, Uva, Kelco, Creda, Bendix, and also Hot Point. Most of them you can decor panels with. I've got on the platform here the Hot Point, and this is, has got, the reason I've got it is because it's got a 30 minute program. So it's super if you're entertaining or indeed you want a quick wash. And I mention it because you might say, oh, well, 30 minutes, I'm sure somebody else does a 30 minute program. This one does include the washing and drying. Inside is very much like dishwashers, but you can actually remove the plate rack and also change the height of the top rack. So really, whatever the washing or dishwashing needs to be, one can change it round. So that's the hot point with a 30-minute quick wash. Now, according to my cards, it's late evening now, and dinner's over. I've loaded my dishes, and I'm going to load my washing machine and, of course, set them on a timer so that they're going to come on the Economy 7 overnight. Washing machines, well, according to Lever Brothers, the detergent people, four point, we wash our clothes, or we do washing, 4.2 times each week, so now we know. In 1977, the twin and single tubs, 47% of homes had them, automatic machines, 27% of homes, and the washer-dryer, well, they hardly existed. In 1987, Twin and single tubs had gone down to 21%, automatics up to 59%, and uh, washer-dryers 7%. And if we do some quick calculations, that meant in 1977, 74% of homes had a washing machine in one form or another, and by 1987, some 87% of homes had them.
So what's on show? Creda, Bendix, Ariston, Hotpoint and Electrolux. And Service 2 are here. And do remember, I'm sure you do, that it was Service who, again British, first in the world to introduce a fully automatic electronic washing machine. So up with us. Hoover are here too with their electronic, another new machine. It's got lots of features. It's 500 to 1300 RPM, so it's got good spin speeds if you want them, and it also has a delay start. But why I actually selected it was because it's got a memory, two memories. Now, at last, it means those of you that do a lot of washing might say, I know I've got lots of programs and there's lots of choice, but I do wish, if only I could. And with this machine, you can actually decide what you want to do. So if you want a hot wash or a cool wash or a vigorous wash or a low spin, a high spin, and so on, it, you just key it in here, put it into the memory store, and the machine is your program, your machine, for as long as you like. You can clear it if you don't want it. So there we are, there's the first machine we can have that we can do what we want to do, not what we're told to do. Irons, of course, are important, even though we've got all these easy care fabrics, we all like to use an iron. And 1977, 97% of homes had one. 1987, well, no change, 97%. But even with the easy care fabrics that I've mentioned, we've, we've got to have one, as I say. And there's a choice. There's dry iron, steam iron, spray iron, heavy iron, light, light, you name it. I mean, there's a very good chance you can get it. And, of course, there's the cordless iron. Again, the same principle as the kettle. You just plug it in, and you have a unit at the bottom. This one is Offie Richard. Very useful for people, again, that perhaps can't, uh, don't want weights, or indeed for my husband who says he likes this iron because the flex doesn't get in the way. Um, so he's very good now at ironing his handkerchiefs, so that's one thing I've got rid of. And they simply plug in here, as soon as you put it back on there, the size on, only takes 25 seconds to heat up, and of course it does mean if you want to carry it off anywhere and do anything, you can, you don't actually have to have an, a plug nearby to do it. I find that quite useful when I'm entertaining. I have a, a cloth with a heated um, a pad underneath and I just make the cloth look nice and neat. So everybody thinks I'm a good laundress, which I'm not. So that is the Morphe Richards. And again, lots of people around showing those. Morphe Richards, Russell Hobbs and Hayden. Uh, Hoover too, of course, they introduced steam arms in the early, uh, in the 1950s, so they're here too. Well, the day's over, of course, hot bath, electric, of course, warm towels for my electric towel rail. I, I tell you, I'm telling the truth. And then I'll get into bed with my electric duvet, which, and my husband, but the duvet is very nice and very comfortable. Uh, that's my day, which is, is quite normal, I think. Most of us work like that. But, of course, there are other appliances that people may wish to use that they find more suitable for their lifestyle. And I'm told that we could have something like 200 appliances in our homes. So I had a look around my home and I, I managed 46. That's without the light fittings, that's just appliances. I had a look around to see what other appliances were here that you might be interested in. Hand dryers, heat tray sadia, hand wash units, Triton, dehumidifier, I think they've got that on the leg stand, T-urn, Swan, uh, again the electric duvet, which I seem to have a thing about on the Dreamland stand, and Breville are showing their rechargeable three-in-one mixer, knife and can opener. There's one other stand I'd like you to take the time out to see if, you, if you've got time. I know you're going to be busy. But all our appliances, as I said, are BAB approved or going through for approval. And the tests are carried out at Leatherhead at our plants testing laboratories. And normally you don't even get the chance to see what's going on there. But today, actually, they have a stand. And so you'll be able to see some of the very stringent tests that they carry out on electrical appliances. Uh, two of the features that they've got is actually uh, a test for opening and closing a microwave oven door. And the unit actually is automatically, not by a man but by a machine, is opened and closed, opened and closed 100,000 times. And everything's got to be safe and in working order after that. Another one is where they're, they're measuring the cooker external temperatures. And I'm sure you've all written about things like this. But I don't know if you realize that we're the only people in Europe that actually have got temperature measurements for the outside of the appliance. Uh, the rest of Europe actually don't bother. We do. Well, I hope I've uh, given you a brief resume of what you're going to see at the exhibition. And I do know that the manufacturers will be out there waiting for you, already willing and able to help. 
Uh, Mr. Taylor is going to speak to you shortly about heating, but just to remind you that we've got something like 12 manufacturers here showing different types of heaters. So they're from fan heaters right through to storage heaters. So I think I've said enough. I'm going to close now, and in a moment, Mr. Jack Taylor, our Central Marketing Director, will be talking to you about the total heating system. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Jenny has given you a very comprehensive...